Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama, and welcome to Somebody Give Me Money So That I Can Build a Really Badass Chicken Coop. <laughs> so the video today is going to be about um, if you are designing a chicken coop, if you have some money to upgrade, maybe you have a really unique situation like we did where we basically moved into this property and this old but awesome chicken coop was already here. Um, Basically, if you had unlimited supplies, unlimited budget, unlimited time, what kind of chicken coop will, would you build and why? So what I'm going to do is basically give you ideas from all the different facets of chicken care, as well as, you know, I've had a coop kit. I look at coops for fun on the internet because I'm super cool. And I have this one now that's a completely different build, obviously, than a coop kit. And so I'm going to go through and analyze all the different aspects of a chicken coop to help you design one that's really functional, that works for you, that's not gonna be something where six months down the road when you're really using it, you realize it was just a really poor design. So thanks for watching this video. Um, if you are new to me, well, lucky you, um, you just found your favorite YouTube channel. Um, but again, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. I've had backyard chickens for about two years. I'm in the San Antonio area. So I have experience with being in a normal neighborhood but I don't have experience with having a lot of animals. So these chickens are very close to our family. They're close distance wise to my house. And I've only ever had five or six birds. I do have five right now. So to give you an idea of what we're dealing with here, again, this coop was is a walk-in chicken coop. And this was on this property when we moved in two weeks ago. So we've been fixing it up and kind of thinking about what we would do. Um, so I'm going to jump right into all my ideas. Now I'll be referencing my notes because I'm a nerd like that and I wrote notes on what I want to cover. So this video may have to be spliced through a couple of different things. So let's go through the different categories. The first category of what you need to consider if you're buying a chicken coop or if you're building one or if you're upgrading or you want to improve it or whatever you're doing. So moving on. The first thing to me that's the most important that kind of trumps everything else is predator proofing. Um, it doesn't matter how cute your coop is or you know how easy it is to get eggs and stuff like that if something can come along and grab your birds in the night and eat them nothing else really matters so predator proofing you need to think about a couple of different things you need to think about flying predators so are your chickens protected from the air um, as well as predators who will just get in so there's a couple of different things you need to think about with predator proofing the first and it's really easy to see on this coop is hardware cloth. Now hardware cloth um, comes in rolls usually and it's the very small squares. I'm gonna get close to it but my phone gets kind of confused as far as focusing. So this is, um, I can't tell if it's a quarter inch or if it's a half inch, I don't remember. But really, really small openings. It's not chicken wire. Chicken wire is bad. You don't wanna use chicken wire for anything above ground in my opinion for your chickens because chicken wire the holes are much bigger and little paws can get can get in like raccoons possums things like that snakes can more easily get in um, so you want to use hardware cloth um, it's not a flimsy material at all I mean you can see there's very little give on it um, it is kind of a pain to work with because these ends are ridiculously sharp you know I'm barely touching it and it's scratching me up so you know of course this is going to be a very stable, very secure solution once you get it on there. Just be careful. You need to wear gloves um, when you're working with it. But certainly hardware cloth all the way around on any zone where your chickens are going to be if you're going to have an open area like this. The other things you want to think about there is for digging under chicken coops. That would be okay to use chicken wire. Now you can see the videos that I did as far as my review video of the Innovation Pet Chicken Coop or the Coop Hacks, which is one of my more popular videos, which is like, here's, you know, um, quick and easy things to upgrade your coop to make it better, especially if you bought one of those cheap coop kits that's, you know, 100 bucks, 200 bucks. Here's some things you can do to make it a lot more functional. You want to think about predators who can come underneath and dig underneath. In my opinion, the most intelligent predators, that's the way they come in. Um, you might have larger owls, hawks, falcons, I don't know, bald eagles, pterodactyls coming in from the sky, but they're not particularly intelligent. They just dive bomb. And I've got some tips that I'll tell you about for flying predators here in just a second. But to me, the intelligent and the most persistent predators, things like raccoons, bobcats, coyotes, 
possums, those kinds of animals, they're going to dig underneath. And the problem is once they know that you've got birds and they've got a way to get in, they will come back every night. They will continue to come back. Like, hey, man, there's still more chickens over there, so we're going to go eat there tomorrow, too. And, hey, guess what? It's a buffet over at the chicken coop on Thursday nights. woo -hoo! So you've got to think about that because once a predator figures out a way in, they will come back every night. Um, again, so we're talking about intelligent mammal predators, basically, mammalian predators. So what you have to do is you need to do predator proofing or predator screening. And what you do is obviously you've got solid ground, or excuse me, you've got solid material going down to the ground, right? But that's not the problem. The predators that we're talking about will dig underneath. Now, this particular coop has two by fours and a lot wider base than what it looks like from right here, so I'm not worried about doing anything on this coop yet. What I am doing with this coop is walking the perimeter every day to see if somebody has started digging, because I know it's not my dogs. My dogs don't dig. Please be quiet. Thank you. So what we need to do is... And what I would recommend now, like I said, chicken wire is okay for this because obviously if a predator gets their hand in right here, they're not grabbing your chicken. If a predator gets their hand in right here or their paw, right, um, then they're, they're able to grab a bird. But if it's bigger gaps right here, it's no big deal. And what you do is you have to attach the chicken wire at two parts. The first thing you do is you staple it or nail or whatever, you know, I'm assuming the bottom of your coop is wood, all the way around. Right, so then you've got like a skirt that's coming out if we're talking about from this angle. And I apologize again, I had this on my coop kit, I haven't done it on this coop. So we've got it stapled right there, and then the chicken wire is just going out. And you want it to come out at least six inches. I would say if you could have it coming out a foot, that would be even better to get it away from the coop. Then what you do over on this end is you just get um, I forgot what they're called, they're like tent hooks, right? So they look like an L or a number seven, and you just mount or put the rest of the, the chicken wire on this side, you just nail it into the ground or fix it into the ground from that side. So essentially a predator, if they wanted to dig under and get into your chicken coop, they have to start a foot out. So they start trying to dig right here and all they're doing is hitting chicken wire and they can't make any progress. Um, a predator in, who's who eats things like chickens, usually if it's gonna be a ton of work, they're just gonna go somewhere else. So you don't have to worry about it. We're almost talking about like chicken security systems, right? Like if you've got a whole bunch of things in place, um, a burglar is not going to sit and try to go through a whole bunch of different measures to get into what you've got. They'll just go somewhere else. So again, what we've talked about so far is talking about predators that are coming in from underneath, right? Using hardware cloth on any windows, any open spaces and ventilation is great. And we'll talk ventilation more later, but I mean, as much open air space as you can give them is awesome, but it's got to be hardware cloth for all of this stuff, guys. If honestly, the only thing that could fit through here is a baby snake. And guess who likes to eat baby snakes? That's right, chickens. <laughs> so, I mean, they can try, but unless it's a venomous snake, then, you know, you don't have to worry about it. So, that's predators from the ground. Two other things we're going to talk about real quick. Predators from the ground as well. You need to have double locking mechanisms. Now, I'm a horrible role model. I just keep mine only one lock locked during the day because I'm short and these are kind of a pain in the ass. But you want to just not just have like a simple little like latch and that's it. Because again, those mammalian predators, especially like raccoons and possums, they are problem solvers. They are extremely intelligent. So you need to have a more complicated lock. These, um, a lot of times you'll find locks or different things like this. I'll show you how this works, but they're called raccoon locks or predator locks because basically it's like a multi-step lock. Um, I'll show you on my coop kit later because um, we still have it. It's over on the side of the yard. They had a different kind, but basically instead of you just being able to do one action to open what you want to open, it requires two or three. This one, and you can buy all of these different kinds of locks just by themselves. This is a quick, easy upgrade. You can buy them at hardware stores. You can buy them on sets at Amazon. Um, this one is a spring, and it's got this funny-looking little hook thing here, and then there's the hook that actually comes through the eye hole. So I have to lift up the spring high enough that I can get the hook out and through, and then it automatically closes itself back. The point is there are different options, but you want a multi-step predator lock. This is for the nesting boxes. This is for the roost bars over here and everywhere you see I've either got the carabiner or I've got the predator locks. So there are different options, but you want to make sure you have those multi-step predator locks. Now let's talk really briefly about flying predators. Now of course if your coop is completely closed, it's a non-issue, but if you've got a run that you're choosing to leave open, and if you see my older videos, my chickens had a run 
where, I mean, it was open. They had a six foot fence around it, but we had nothing on the ceiling as it were. So it was completely open. Um, the obvious thing is you could put something across the top, even if it's just a netting, um, even if it's something that's not metal, it's just plastic, essentially, that's better than nothing. Of course, you want to think about, do you want something that's solid? So it also blocks the rain and it blocks water and things like that. Or do you want something that's just like a netting? So everything else can get through except for, you know, predatory birds. The other things you can do, either if you've already done that or you don't want to, or your chickens are in a huge open run area or just around your coop just for the hell of it. Um, things that are shiny and that move around make predatory birds confused. It distracts them. and They don't like it. So we're talking about if you have a box of, I don't know, old AOL discs or old CDs. Um, I even have, um, let me see if I can find it. I've got like shiny ribbon, like really reflective, you know, broken glass. Um, you know, it could be like yard decor. Here's what we got. But anything that's anything that's really shiny and really reflective like that um you could tie it up tape it up put it up in the trees you know up above the level of your actual chickens and what it'll do is it'll distract and confuse those birds so that's a quick easy thing that you can do just to help for predator proofing. so let's go on to the next thing ventilation Ventilation or, you know, just having there be moving air throughout your coop is so, 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 so important. Now, some of this is going to depend on, of course, the climate where you are. Of course, if you're in a colder climate and maybe the hottest you ever get is 50 or 60 degrees, um, and I'm in Fahrenheit because I'm just a stupid American, so um, then maybe you would have a little bit different concerns than mine. Here's my idea, and if I had unlimited money, and probably as we get into this winter, this is what I'm going to do. My ideal coop would have a ton of ventilation in that I would not have very many solid walls at all, if possible. Um, I do over in this zone, and I apologize, I haven't taken you all the way around this coop. This coop pretty much on this end, this little pocket over here, has um, almost like what I did on my old coop kit. It has pretty much a solid wall on this side, pretty much a solid wall on this side as I dodge branches so I don't impale myself. And then a solid wall on this side, but only in this corner of the coop, if that makes sense. It's not all the way down. It's just this zone. So, and this is honestly the important area because this is where the birds are at night, right? Their roosts are up in there. So that part is a lot more protected. Their roosts are, I know you can't see, I'll go in shortly, but their roosts are up in that area and their nesting boxes are in that area. So this is like I come out and I play and I eat and drink and whatever, but that's where I am at night. But other than, you know, maybe that little pocketed area, I like having a lot of open air. I like the chickens being able to have more bugs. Obviously, there's a lot more fresh air and breeze that's going through. Here's why you need ventilation. There's two reasons. The first reason is the pretty obvious reason if you don't want it to stink in there. Um, chicken poop, while it is great for compost and things like that, and in my opinion, it's more useful than most other pet poop you would find in a backyard, right? Like my dog's poop and my cat's poop is like completely useless. So... Other than, you know, like what you could use for manure and things like that, chicken compost is awesome. So their poop is actually useful, but it's very high in ammonia because their poop and their pee are all in the same dropping. So there is a lot of ammonia. And of course, as it breaks down, it will smell. The chickens, you need to get that smell out. So that's the obvious reason, right, is for ammonia breakdown. The other reason, though, is especially if you're in warmer climates, chickens do a lot better in cold weather than they do in warm weather. Um, for us, I've noticed right when we get a little over 90 degrees, like 92, 93, again, we're in Fahrenheit, um, and my chickens are panting, that's where it becomes a problem. Like, okay, I need to cool them down. It'll be interesting to see what it's like this summer because they're in this new space that's completely shaded, and they're getting morning sun right here, but this is like the northeast side of the house, so we're not going to be dealing with hot afternoon sun. So... I need to make sure that there's plenty of cool air and breeze moving through so that I don't have to worry about my birds getting overheated because that sucks. If they're trapped in this space, they couldn't get cooler even if they wanted to. Um, but here's the, the problem here. Um, now, I'll tell you, I have a whole video about this called Winterizing Your Coop, basically how to prepare your coop for cold weather. <coughs> Excuse me. And I go into it a lot more there. Um, so you need, you do need to think about insulation, which is the flip side, right? Like I, I want to hold the warm air in, in the winters. 
So you kind of have to decide for your climate, depending on where you are. Like Nikki is still dealing with like cold and snowy weather. So she would have different priorities and have a different setup than Rich, for example, who's in Florida. Um, you know, I'm in South Texas. We don't have near as much as much rain, maybe as somebody who's on the coast, but we certainly have summers that are well over 100, 810 Fahrenheit. So that's something to think about. So it's that balance of ventilation, cool air, everything open, moving through, but having spaces that are insulated. That area over there will be a nice pocket that will hold warmth over in that zone. So now that I've told you about what, what you're thinking about and how much ventilation to have or whatever, plus, I mean, I honestly, I just like seeing my birds. Like if all of this was solid walls, except for the door, like from my house, I would hardly be able to see my girls. Like I just like to see them and I like them to be able to see out. Like they can see all of these plants. We have birds and hummingbirds and butterflies and all kinds of stuff everywhere. I like them to feel like they're a part of that. So here's what I would do and what I plan on doing. Again, if someone would just pay me, like, I don't know, Purina or somebody needs to just give me money to make videos and like be ridiculous with chickens. Uh, but this is what I would do. I would have a ton of ventilation, like wall to wall, just hardware cloth, right? Um, so that it's super open. There's a lot of ventilation. There's a lot of breeze, blah, blah, blah. If you have an overhanging roof, um, we've had two thunderstorms since we've lived here. The coop inside, the bedding and all of this stuff in there has not gotten wet at all because of that overhanging roof. So it's not like, oh, well, if you keep it open like this, everything's going to get wet. No, it didn't. Ha <laughs> ha. What I would do is I would have a tarp or feed bags because I like to recycle, or I would have something. There was already that, that fabric over there. That's not ideal, but it's better than nothing. And I would have it cut to fit. I would have loops in it, like shower curtain, like reinforced loops. So it wouldn't rip and stuff that would mount to, you know, nails or hooks or something down here. And then I would have that material measured. I would have it mounted up along the top, ready to go. And then I would roll it up and keep it up on the top, almost like old school, um, like shades for your windows. And then if it's going to really rain, or if I feel like there's a north wind blowing in that's really bad or whatever, I would pull down whatever sections I want and just go dun, 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 sing, 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 and mount them. Thank you for the sound effects. Those are free. Um, I would mount it along the bottom so it wouldn't blow around and like get all ripped up and ridiculous. And you could customize whichever side you want. Like maybe I just want all of the back side to be covered and I want this side to be open. Maybe I just want this panel and the reflective panel on the other side, the, the ones that face each other to be covered. But I would have it all measured like this summer. That's what I'm, one of the things I'm planning on doing is I want to find a material. I mean, hell, even that plastic sheeting that I used right here, find like a lighter duty one, maybe one that's like semi-transparent. Um, you could use like pool tarps, like the big blue tarps that you put down on the ground underneath, like an above the ground pool. Um, I don't know what material would you guys recommend? You know what I'm talking about? Obviously it can't be like a fabric. Like I can't use blankets or anything like that. I would want it to be plastic. Um, but something that I could just, I could measure, I could cut, I could have a way to mount it and hook it down here on the bottom. I mean, I, I'm going with shower curtains guys. Like shit, maybe I should just put a shower curtain rod right there. It'd have to be really long though. Hmm, mm -hmm. Cause that's a good eight feet up where those those are right there. And I apologize. I need to stop using profanity. I'll be a good person. Um, but what I'm thinking is then just having the material stay rolled up and, you know, mounted or fixed so that it stays up there. And yes, I only painted half my hand. That's the only time I had. Um, so figuring out how I'm going to do that, but that way I could completely customize which walls I wanted to be solid. And that way it keeps out the hail or the rain or the North wind or, you know, the monsoon or the, I don't know, sandstorm or whatever we would possibly have here, but it's only temporary. And that way it's almost kind of like having two different spaces, right? Like two different chicken coops. So that's what to think about for ventilation. Again, windows, sliding doors, all of that stuff is great, but you just need to have a good balance of ventilation versus insulation. Again, if you're new to this, if you're wanting more information, go find my winterizing your coop video. And that's basically the main thing that I talk about there is this is how the hot air rises and this is how chickens need to sleep when it's cold and blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Right, Gracie Bird? All right, so now let's talk about poop. And we're gonna cover two topics sort of at the same time. We're gonna talk about chicken poop and we're gonna talk about what you should have on the ground inside your coop. So again, if we're building the coop of our dreams, there's going to be a lot of poop. Um, and again, chickens, their poop and pee is all as one. And another fascinating thing about chicken poop is that they, they poop in their sleep. So all day, every day, and all night, every night, you're going to be dealing with poop. So what I wanted to talk about first, I mean, we covered the ventilation aspect of it already, but 
is it going to be easy for you to get to where the poop is so that you can get it out? Um, now there is something called the deep litter method, which you can do if you have a larger space. Um, it basically just means that you kind of end up composting under the chicken's feet. Um, there's a specific way to do it. I don't know a lot about it because it hasn't worked for the spaces that I have um, and for what I'm going for, but that's certainly an option. Again, it's called the deep litter method. If you want to look into that, um, you have to do it correctly or it can get really, really disgusting, but I'm not going to talk much about it because I don't do that. It hasn't worked for my situations. So, of course, if you're putting your coop down, you're not going to build a floor for them, right? That's like tile or anything like that. They're just going to be on the ground. But should you just leave them on the ground or should you put something on top of it? Um, on this coop that we inherited, there was already extra stuff put on top of the ground level. As you can see, I mean, or maybe you can see, it's definitely been built up from just the ground level out here. Um, and again, that helps with predator proofing, but it's also material that you have to buy. So it's up to you. Um, I've done other videos on the walk-in coop updates to tell you about what stuff I've added here. Um, there's good and bad, but let's. there's two different things when, when you're, you're talking about cleaning out your coop. Number one, what, what material do you want to use? And number two, how are you going to get to it? Um, one thing I like about this coop is you have the main door here, right? And since this is, I mean, it's easily, that door is probably at least seven feet tall. And so the whole thing is probably, you know, eight or nine. I don't know. I mean, I'm five feet tall, so I don't know anything. Um, so this huge space right here, I don't really necessarily understand this. Let me know if this makes sense to you. There's a little clean out door here, but it's so narrow that it's like, I don't know if that's maybe just to like slide in their food or something. Um, because obviously if I have like my rake, I don't, it's not really easy for me. I mean, that door is easily less than a foot tall. So it's kind of like, I don't really understand what that was for. It's to access that space there underneath, but I don't, I don't get it. Um, while we're at it, I got this rake at Lowe's. Um, I know it's kind of hard to see, but it's adjustable. So you can adjust how wide or how narrow it fans out. And this thing, I mean, it was, it was less than $20 for sure. I bought it a long time ago, but it's been fantastic. It's really lightweight, really easy for, um, you know, for one person to handle on a regular basis. So there's that little door, there's the main door. And then my chicken's roost is up here. So this gigantic thing, folds down like a pickup bed and I can clean from there. Now the only problem in this situation in particular is that whole door is open while I'm cleaning. So if you have an escape artist, it'll be really easy for them to hop out. So maybe make it two separate spaces, you know, so you, you need to think about, okay, how am I going to get in there so that I can clean the poop? Cause you can make this big, beautiful space, but if it's really inconvenient for you to get in there and get it all cleaned up, that's not really going to help you too much. So I would almost think, that you would maybe want an access point on every side. I don't know, that just depends. The other thing, before we go on and talk more about the ground, the other thing with all of your access points is for every access point, you know, for every door or gate or, you know, flip up door or vent or whatever, you've got to have a way to lock it and a predator lock. So just keep that in mind. Okay, for the ground, there are certain materials that are good and certain materials that are bad. Of course, if you have a roof, you're not as worried about, you know, I don't want this to get muddy and molded and gross because you're not necessarily worried about getting it wet. Um, I will tell you that if you're using, if you're wanting to go buy bags of stuff, there's a lot of stuff that you could use. Um, the cheapest would probably be topsoil. Topsoil is fine. Any dirt is fine as long as it has no fertilizer and no additives and no weird stuff. Because remember, your chickens eat stuff off the ground. They put you know, they need obviously food and they'll be looking for bugs and things like that. But they also eat grasses and leaves and things like that and flowers. And they also eat stuff that serves as grit. So you can't think, oh, well, they're not going to, you know, eat this dirt because it has fertilizer in it. Well, I mean, yeah, they're going to be getting some of it in their system. So certainly nothing that has any kind of pesticide, fertilizer, additive, any weird stuff like that. Topsoil is cheap and it's great. Um, you can get... If you're going to get a sand, sand is fine also, um, but you want to get something that doesn't have any kind of, um, and the word just escaped me, any, any mortar component, M-O-R-T-A-R. -R. In other words, it, it's not going to bond to other stuff when it gets wet. Um, so no mortar component. And I don't mean like just wet sand sticking to itself, but I mean like it actually forms an actual permanent bond. Um, so no mortar components. The good news with that is that the sand that will work for your chickens is the cheaper sand. 
So like contractors sand that they use to mix with concrete to just make it, you know, um, to have a bit more friction. So it's not as smooth and slippery. It has a bit more grit to it. That's also an option if you want to go with sand. So just cheap stuff, not sandbox sand, um, which is actually more expensive anyway. So just a cheaper sand. Again, topsoil is fine. Um, if you wanted to go with kind of the more unusual materials, the stuff that I hadn't really heard of and didn't really know what it was, you can do decomposed granite. Yes, granite as in the natural rock um, that's decomposed. I have a lot of that in here that you're looking at as well as up underneath their roost boxes. It is clumpier. It is bigger pieces of stuff, and I know my phone is getting confused on what to focus on, but you can see in the light, it is bigger chunks of stuff. I mean, no bigger than like a grape, but there are some actual like rock pieces that came in those bags. Again, the good news with that stuff is that it's cheap. Um, another thing that I like if you don't mind spending a bit more money or, or if your chickens do have a run or an area that is not covered, so in other words, it's going to get wet. I am a huge, huge, huge advocate for peat moss. Um, it is spelled P-E-A-T-M-O-S-S. -S. And I do have a separate video where I demoed that and I dumped a couple bags out outside when my girls were living in an uncovered run with a coop. And peat moss is going to be a little bit more expensive, but you don't need a thick layer of it. It's not like, you know, you have to have inches and inches of it, like just a thin covering, especially if you're going to have your chickens out where, you know, they're going to get rained on where the ground is going to get wet. Peat moss is extremely soft. It smells good. It smells earthy, but not like in a rotting type way. Like it just smells like if you like gardening and you like being out in, in gardens and greenhouses and things like that, I mean, it'll smell good to you. It just has that fresh earthy smell. It's extremely fine. Um, and it feels soft. Like it feels really soft. And peat moss is basically the exoskeletons of like moss and algae. Um, and it's fascinating stuff, but it's super, super, because it used to be moss, it's super absorbent. So when, if I was to dump some in here and then this area get rained on or get flooded, all the areas that had a sufficient layer of peat moss would not feel or look like there's puddles, like there's standing water, like it's all wet and nasty and gross. So if you're worried about, you know, there's a, there's a low spot or I need some filler or I'm not going to cover all of this area, the chickens are going to kind of be out a little bit. I'm a huge advocate for peat moss. It's not super crazy expensive, but it'll be more expensive per square foot than, um, or per cubic foot, I guess, than your, um, than your topsoil. So those are the different materials that I recommend. Now, if you want to add in materials, and this is going to get into bedding, which is the next section. I know this is the longest video ever. Like I need a cough drop because I've been talking too much, but, um, if you are wanting to add in stuff and this is totally optional, you can look into diatomaceous earth or DE. Um, as something that you can kind of put in for where your chickens dig around, where they dust bathe, things like that. That helps with parasites. It helps with overall chicken health. There are people online who don't like it at all. Um, I have used it before, but I'm not like a huge big, like I feel strongly about it. Um, there are other things that I've talked about in other videos, like apple cider vinegar, like raw garlic, other things that you can give your chickens that it's like, there's nobody on the internet that says that could potentially be bad. DE is one of those where it's like, there's the group of people online who like it, the group who are kind of unsure, like myself, and the group who don't like it. So um, I am a little bit more conservative with that stuff. But there's poultry dust. There is DE. Um, there's also PDZ, which will be found like in your equine horse section of your feed stores. Um, and it is basically like a cat litter. You wouldn't need it in this area, but like under the roost boxes where you're going to have the most poop, um, that's another material that you could just mix in or have in. Finally, if we're talking about, um, you know, we're talking about ground cover and now we're about ready to move up to bedding. If you want to buy um, a bedding bedding for like their nest boxes and things like that, which I recommend, I mean, you know, I'd like the area where they are making my breakfast to be comfortable for them so that they lay happy, delicious eggs and not, you know, bitter eggs of resentment. So um, do not give your chickens anything that is cedar. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe some people are okay with it if it's in a well-ventilated area like this, but chickens are very sensitive to respiratory issues. Um, they have sensitive respiratory systems. Um, if you have, you know, a respiratory illness and one bird gets it, it can kill everybody in your flock by the time you even realize what's going on. Um, and not talking about respiratory disease, but just respiratory sensitivity. Um, chickens should not be inhaling the cedar shavings or like the dust from cedar. Um, pine is totally fine. Um, there's other stuff you can get like Aspen that I honestly haven't researched cause I haven't needed to. Pine is super cheap. Um, 
you know, you can order it online if nobody around you has it. But there, of course, there's no need for you to put that here on the ground because that would be ridiculous. Um, but as we get up into what you want to put in their roosts area and their nesting boxes, usually a lot of that material can be the same. But for nesting boxes in particular, I like to use pine. Again, you can look into poultry dust, PDZ, diatomaceous earth. I have videos on all of that stuff, but that's not really the focus of this video. So I'm just going to touch on it. Hello, ladies. Good evening. Good evening. All right. So let's talk roosts. So this is the setup that I've got in here. And I, I know like <laughs> this thing is so big, like I, I, there's, I can't even back up and show you everything at the same time. So we're going to talk about two things. We're going to talk about how they sleep and how to get them to where they need to sleep. Um, I do have a video. I, I know I keep referencing my own content, but a lot of stuff, it's kind of like I need to glaze over it so this video isn't six hours long, too late. I have done a video on chicken sleep where you can learn about how chickens sleep, but the only thing I'm going to talk about here is the square footage that each bird needs for their little feathered hiney and that they need a wide board to sleep on. Unlike some other bird species, chickens do not, sorry, chickens do not grab on like this when they sleep. They just sleep flat and they like to kind of squash themselves down on their feet and kind of sleep on their feet, but they do not grab onto something. So if you think that your bird needs to sleep, your chicken needs to sleep on something like this, and I know it's dirty, I apologize, you were wrong. This will be extremely, extremely uncomfortable for them. Um, that would be like you having to stand on your tiptoes all night when you sleep. They need a big flat board, like a two by four, so that their entire foot, all their toes and everything can just sit like this. And then, you know, you've seen birds like when they're cold and stuff and they kind of just look really fat and fluffy and they cover up their feet. That's what chickens do when they sleep. Okay. So they need a wide flat board. It's probably going to get poop on it sometimes. So you need to think about, you know, should I seal it? Should I do something so that it's easy to get to and it's easy to clean? Or should I make it removable? These are not removable. These are bolted, screwed in. So, um, the way they're positioned, and I'll show you in a second, the way they're positioned, I don't get a lot of poop on them, but it's out. The other thing is, square footage wise, space wise, um, some of those coop kits tell you that each bird needs only six inches across. But I mean, you look at my girls and then you think about them fattening themselves up and fluffing up to go to sleep. Each bird is going to need at least, I would say, between eight and 12 inches of like parking space basically at night. So this space would comfortably house, if we're looking at my two roost bars, would comfortably house 10 birds, probably maybe up to 13. That's probably too much because I'm just eyeballing it, but 10 or 11 for sure. And I have five right now, so they're cool. They're good. Um, but those coop kits, especially don't, don't go by their readings because they're liars. I love my innovation pet coop kit. I thought it was a great purchase, well worth the money. Um, but they are liars and <laughs> the square footage was way, way, way less. As far as getting up to where they're going to sleep, if you're building a coop, if you're designing a coop, again, notice this is all closed off, closed off, closed off there. I do keep, where am I at? I do keep that window open for ventilation at night. Again, watch my sleep video. Watch the, um, I'm trying to not step on a chicken as I back up here. Watch the video about ventilation versus insulation, that winterizing your coop video. So you see, you know, just the way science works. I mean, heat rises at night. So if you see closely, that's also open there on the top so that the chickens don't get too hot. They do much better being a little bit cold at night than being too hot at night. You don't want to open up your coop in the morning and find a dead bird who got too hot in the night. That happened to me. Um, and it was, it was terrible. So, all right. So talking about, we've got, um, you know, we, we talked about the bedding. You're going to be cleaning that from poop every single day. So that for me is contractor sand. It is decomposed granite because those are two cheap materials that I could just mix up. And it's got PDZ in it that just is like, it's like cat litter. Like it just clumps. Okay. As far as building ramps to go up, chickens, especially bigger breeds. Um, now meat birds, you know, they're supposed to get really fat really fast because then you usually want to um, cull them before they're a year old. But any birds, you can see my girls, I mean, they're, they're big. You don't want them to be having to jump up or down a big distance because it is bad for their legs and bad for their feet. Um, it can cause bumblefoot, which is actually an open wound that basically gets staph infection because, I mean, they stand in the ground and on, an, on their poop all day. Um, it can go into their bloodstream and it can kill them. Um, chickens also don't have particularly strong hip bones. So if my bird was to um, hop from this spot down to the ground, that's a good three and a half, almost four feet, um, that would really, really potentially damage their hip. And I mean, and that's whether they're, you know, whether their wings are clipped or not. And the problem with chickens is you have to remember they will hide an injury 
until it is like literally killing them because they don't want to be the weak one in the flock. Pecking order is real. They will get picked off. They will get bullied. It will be bad. So unless they're just in agonizing pain, they will hide that they are hurt. And even a well-intentioned owner may not even know for a while. So you need to make sure you have lots of access points. I get nervous with my chickens hopping up onto this thing. And this is only two feet off the ground just because I I'm just paranoid. I've had to treat Bumblefoot on my girls before. It's been a nightmare with this one right here. But now she's my favorite. So, you know. So we did a ramp and we put these bars on it just so that it's easier. And they're not, you know, again, they're not grabbing, they're not a perching bird, like a little parakeet or something like that, but just so that they don't slide all the way down. That's more for just a bit of texture. Um, so the way we built it is, and you know, it's not a very steep angle comes up to here. Then there's a ramp back there to get up to this level. And then a ramp here, it's all bolted down. Um, it has enough texture on it that they're not going to easily slip. So you need to make sure if you were to build your own coop or you're upgrading or you're expanding or whatever, that you have enough square footage per bird for space. And I mean, let's be real, that chicken math exists. So give yourself more space than you think you need. Because there may be one weird bird who always wants to sleep on the bottom. Or all of my five birds, they will all cram together in one little spot because they like to cuddle. And they snuggle with each other and they're just weird. Right? Weird? Right. Okay. Um, but you also need to think about ventilation versus insulation. You need to think about an easy access way to clean. I'll be honest, that big door that I showed you back there, since I've set up this coop and cleaned everything out and scrubbed it and all that stuff, I haven't opened that door because my chickens come up there to see what's going on and I don't want them hopping out into my yard. So, um, that's certainly one thing that I would have changed. So now let us continue the never ending video of building the best coop ever. And let's talk about where to store stuff. I would suggest you have a zone where you can keep feed bags, trash cans, treats, all kinds of supplies. We just have a storage bin right there, but it's just a really quick little thing to think about, like where are you going to put storage? This coop has an open zone here around the corner that you can see we put old like wood and like excess feed bags and stuff. But of course, if there was wind and rain or whatever, you know, obviously this space isn't completely safe. So I would just have a little zone off to the side somewhere. Again, an external storage bin would be fine, but just something where you have, where you have storage where you could put stuff. And then what's the point in having chickens if you can't have eggs? <laughs> Hi, Lisa Berry. Sorry, excuse me. Um, so nest boxes, you honestly don't need one per chicken. Um, they're not going to necessarily lay all at the same time. And plus chickens are weird. They have funny preferences where they all want the same nesting box at the same time. And then it's kind of like little kids fighting over the bathroom. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about, well, I have five birds, so I need to have five nesting boxes. And obviously roosters don't need that space at all. So we're only talking about the females. Um, for my five chickens, they really only used two of these nesting boxes and they only used two out of the three in my other coop as well. So, um, you know, and that space you want easy access to not only so you can just come out and grab eggs without having to like, you know, go and like, you know, muck out anything, but also because that's going to be a separate space to clean. And as a side note, you're going to want to train your birds to not sleep in the nesting boxes. It's not for them to sleep in. So this space as wide as this is, this is probably between 12 and 14 inches wide, in my opinion, is way too big. You can see the little indent that they make for their butts, you know, for them to make it into a nest shape. Yes, madam. What do you want, boss lady? There's Gracie back there talking to you guys. Say hi, Gracie bird. Poor Gracie. She likes that bucket. You going to go in there? Are you busy? She likes that bucket. What a weirdo. Um, but I feel like this thing is way too big. I'm not saying that you want it to be painfully uncomfortable for them, like way too small. But at the same time, like, you know, you don't want it to be too comfortable because you don't want them sleeping in there. Because then when they, oh my gosh, girls. Jeez. Because then when they sleep in there, then they poop in there. And then it's more mess for you. So um, there are also, there's all kinds of videos about, you know, herbs that you can put in to the nesting boxes to help your chickens be... I don't know, happy or, or whatever when they're laying eggs. As you can see, I just use pine because it's cheap. It's easy to clean out. It smells good. It's not dangerous for them. There's no weirdness. Um, so, and usually when you see nesting boxes, they're built sticking out like that. 
so that the door is at an angle. You certainly don't have to do that, but most kits and designs that I see, they have it like that. It does not have to be on the roost side. Like this is where they sleep, right? It doesn't have to be over on that side, but again, usually I see that as well. The reason we have the plastic tarp over that door is because when we inherited this coop, as you can see, a lot of this external wood is like really damaged. Um, I don't know if it was just sealed and it needed to be resealed and it wasn't, or I don't know. But there was water getting in up here, like basically on the seam of the door. So we've just covered it in plastic for now until we can do a more permanent solution. Um, Gracie Bird. What are you doing, girl? I don't know if you could see her. She's like hanging out in this zone over here. So now we get to talk about fun stuff. And that's what kind of entertainment do you want to have for your chickens? Um, especially if your chickens are going to be in like a coop run combo like this is to where it's not like they have an indoor space, but then they also have this outdoor space like mine used to. Um, I wasn't as concerned about like amusing my birds because they got to be out in the open. Now, I mean, certainly they have ventilation and everything, but they're technically still inside. So um, <laughs> I was going to show you some of the stuff that I've picked up. I mean, the first thing, of course, is treats. This coop was nice in that it has a lot of treats and stuff, or excuse me, a lot of hooks already set up. Um, shepherd's hooks, like I have one here that is just heavy duty um, to where you can hang like a suet feeder, which is what that looks like, that little square cage thing. Or where you can just, you know, get a head of lettuce and stick a nail in it and hang that um, for treats. You can certainly always get mealworms, um, sunflower seeds, you know, other stuff like that and throw it on the ground as well. I'm not a huge fan of cracked corn. I've never bought it for my chickens. Um, from the research that I've done, kind of like for us, like corn products don't really have a lot of nutrition in them. It's, it's, it's not going to hurt your birds. It's just not doing anything for them nutritionally. So, I mean, if you're trying to train them to come to you or... Um, I don't know, like there's some extenuating circumstance to where you feel like, oh crap, I need to get my birds in right now. Maybe that could be, I mean, cracked corn is called chicken crack because it makes them go crazy, but it doesn't really have a lot of health benefits. Um, I know some people feel differently. That's totally fine to each their own. Like, oh geez, let's not start fighting in the comments, but I don't like cracked corn and I don't buy it because I, to me, it's just worthless. It doesn't have any nutritional value. Um, but just some place where it's easy for you to dispense treats as boss lady stands there and complains because nothing's ever good enough for her. Um, other things for entertainment. I mean, just roosts, swings, different things like that, that you can add to give your birds a little bit of something to do. A dust bath is certainly an essential thing. Um, good grief girls. So right now my girls can make this whole thing a dust bath basically just because of the material that's on the ground now before when they were on hard ground, it was a little bit more difficult, but there was already sand and stuff here. I Man, this is like ridiculous. So we have a designated area. That tire does have um, poultry dust and more stuff in it. And then we're going to try to keep that one. Like I'm going to go buy a bag of sand that's just for that and then mix up the stuff that I like to mix up. I do have other videos of dust baths and you can read the comments on that as well as far as what kind of stuff people like to put in there. Again, some people go crazy and they put, you know, um, they put DE in it and they buy dried herbs and they put it in it and they do like a whole bunch of other stuff that's, you know, pest prevention and more medicinal type stuff. For me, I don't, I don't do a ton because I don't have that kind of problem. I'm not on farmland where there have been, you know, I don't know, goats and cows and all kinds of crazy stuff that might imply that there would be more disease in the ground. Um, but this short roost, they don't sleep out here. They tried the first night, but it's just something for them to do. You can see there's a treat block hanging for them right there. Other things you can do for chickens, you can certainly build them a swing that's basically a roost on rope, right? Or a chain that will swing. The thing that I found, because I really wanted my chickens to have a swing, like I really, really, really wanted them to have a swing. Apparently, if they're not used to swinging on it when they're chicks, like when they're babies, you put them on it and you're like, look, this is fun, hooray. And then you do it again and then you do it again. If you don't kind of train them to know what a swing is, then they'll basically just ignore it and they'll never do anything with it. So, um, that is something you kind of have to have planned out, which I didn't do. Oh man. But see, they like hanging out on this roost and they're not going to try to go to sleep or anything. They're just going to sit there and yell at me. Other things that would be good for chickens and you can look up, you know, remedies for chicken boredom. Um, and again, the reason you want to do that is because a bored chicken can be a dangerous thing. Um, they can do everything from start bullying each other to, 
start figuring out that they can eat eggs. And then if they figure out that they can eat eggs, then you're not going to get to eat them because they will get to them first. So, um, you know, and, and times like in the really, really hot summers, if you're not letting your birds out or the really, really cold winters to where they're stuck inside, you want to have something for them to do. I got these at the dollar store this morning and I was so excited. I'm going to try to angle it so you don't have to see my face. Um, but this is a mirror that's, I'm just going to, I guess I was holding it upside down. I'm just going to stick it on a nail head that's in there. And chickens are fascinated with looking at themselves. Like that's literally a dollar store. I mean, you know, the decor factor <laughs> will just be hilarious. But there's all kinds of funny little things that you can put in your coop for it to be entertaining. Um, some people have flower boxes, like the roof is the bottom of a flower box. Um, I don't know how that would work if people do like it solid on the bottom or if they let the roots come down. The other thing that my girls don't have right now that I highly recommend in a coop area or run area, it's kind of hiding over here in the corner. It's called a grazing box. The problem with giving your chickens fresh plants, potted plants, things like that, is they can eat it and kill it quickly. Not because they're trying to kill it. They're not attacking it. They're just eating it or they're digging around it or whatever, and it's going to end up killing the plant pretty quickly. So a grazing box, and again, you can see my other videos on it, but essentially it gives the plant, oh, someone's laid an egg. <laughs> it gives the plant a couple of inches where it's safe. Plus the roots are protected, right? Because the chickens can't get to the dirt. So the chickens can eat it after it grows past a certain point, but all they can do is trim the plant. So what we're planning on doing by summer is under where that pallet is, building them a run that goes around back behind this shed. Cause I mean, it's pretty much wasted space, right? Like I'm not gonna plant anything or do anything back there. I don't want my kids going back there. And then stopping it probably right there. And this grazing box is gonna go right in this zone. Um, so we'll be planting stuff and then they have that and the greenery, but it's not gonna be something like, hey, I bought you guys flowers and oh wait, 10 minutes later, the plant is entirely gone. So it's sort of a perpetual solution. Um, I would love to get more of these. This is not expensive to build. Um, oh, there is a bee. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's just a big old bumblebee. He's fine. He's not trying to hurt you. We've got salvia here on this old dilapidated pond that I'm hoping to fix. It. He's all right. He's after the, the flowers, baby. He won't hurt you. So there's the grazing box ready to be moved. But when it's up and running, and you can put wheatgrass in there, and you can put herbs in there. Of course, since I've got hardware cloth again, you can see how small it is. You can't put anything that's got too much of a wide leaf because obviously it'll kind of get stuck there on the ceiling. That's pretty much it. The only other things I would suggest is make sure that you're thinking about not only for the birds you know you have, but the birds you may have. I would try, you know, again, we're, we're talking if you are upgrading or increasing or whatever, just keep in mind the way I'm building this is there going to be any way for me to add more roosts later or for me to add more square footage later for more birds um, as far as giving them more outdoor space, that kind of thing. So the other thing that we need to talk about, duh, like I'm looking right at it and I forgot, is food and water. Um, my situation right now for five birds, I only have to fill up each of those things once, maybe twice a week. So it's not time consuming. It works for me. It is kind of a pain that I have to like fully go in there and I have to carry the bucket out and I have to like, you know, carry it over to the hose and I have to bring it back. That's kind of annoying, but it's just an inconvenience. There are automatic watering systems that you can hook up to a water line to a hose. I didn't want to bother with that yet because we're gone sometimes during the day and I want to be able to keep an eye on it. In my coop hacks video, which is one of the more popular videos that I've got, you can go look and see the automatic food and water system that I had, which again, I only had to fill up once a week, but it was a lot more convenient because the side that I had to access in order to fill everything up was on the outside of the coop. So I didn't have to go in at all. And then of course it breaches the hardware cloth basically and goes in on the other side. Um, but we made it out of um, basically different pieces of PVC and I go through the dimensions and all that stuff in the video so that you can see it. But we call that the automatic feeder and waterer. It was not hooked up to a water line, but you certainly can do that. I'll be right there, baby. Um, you can, of course, just use a hanging feeder. You want to make sure you use heavy-duty, um, you know, S-hooks or screws and things. So that you've got, you don't have to worry about it being able to hold the weight of a full, you know, food container or whatever. I like having my food and water up off the ground because the chickens dig around all the time and I don't want to worry about there being like junk in their water all the time. 
chickens are like us. I mean, they, they shouldn't really have to go without food either, but if they had to go without food for a little while, that's okay. You don't want them to have to go without water like at all. It'll slow down their laying at minimum, but I mean, it can also be a lot more serious. So as far as waterers, again, I have other videos on that stuff. This one is just a, don't laugh and be careful what you search for, but it's like a, a chicken little cup feeder that's got like a little nipple thing on it. There's a little thing in there that's yellow. And basically as they tap that, it releases water as it, as it moves. Everybody's going to start laying eggs, huh? Flapsy, are you going too? If you've never heard an egg song, I mean, you guys are getting like the grand chorus today. Tell them, Callie. So I think I've covered everything. Good Lord. I never want to do a video again. This has been ridiculous. Um, if you can think of anything else that's in your coop or like, oh, I saw this one online and it was really cool. And I thought it was a really smart idea as far as functionality for being able to take care of your birds, for it being clean, it being healthy for your chickens, again, for it being convenient for us. Let us know in the comments. And it would be really, really great if you could put, like the first thing you put in your comment is for predators, colon, and then tell us what it is. And then that way, as we're scanning through comments, we kind of know what category you're talking about. Is it for predators? Is it for getting the eggs easily? Is it for sleeping? Is it for food and water? Is it for ventilation? Like, what is it for? So, I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. This has been the longest video ever. But I hope it's giving you some ideas. If you're thinking about getting chickens, if you're kind of thinking about, well, we've been looking at coop kits, but we're not really sure if this is a good one. You know, we're not sure what we need, what we're looking for. Could we just build one? Now you kind of have an idea of checking the boxes of, you know, what you would need to serve you. Again, if you've got meat birds, you know, maybe you've got some different goals. The last thing I'm going to do really, really quickly, because this coop is in a ton of other videos, this is what, <laughs> that is not a chicken coop. That was already here. Don't judge me. So this is the innovation pet coop as it's sitting over here really sad. There's the automatic waterer that started on the outside. You fill it up from the top and then it goes inside and it has chicken nipples on it. No chickens don't have nipples. This is what the thing is called. Um, hardware cloth all the way around. You want a roof that I would even have the roof extend further than that off the side so you don't worry about stuff getting wet. Um, this is closed during the day, so it's a non-issue, but the main door to open it was right here. Um, I had feed bags around to help with the, just the weaknesses with the wood and, um, for the, the winter wind. Even the sliding windows have hardware cloth. Everything has hardware cloth. And there were a lot of summer nights where this stayed open. So the nesting boxes and everything were over on this side. So I mean for, I don't remember how much we spent on this. I want to say just over a hundred dollars. It was great for the price. It served its purpose. Of course, in our situation, us coming back and um, getting this house that has a coop already in it, of course, we're going to choose the other one. But this one has been good to us. It's been okay. That's where they go up to where the nesting boxes and the roosts are. Those pieces of wood, um, the ramp, and then some of the, the roost bar pieces we had, um, we took out when we were going to carry it across the yard because this thing is heavy. Um, but it had a sliding tray that came out so you could clean underneath the roost so that was really easy and I just put PDZ in there it's kind of like changing a litter box and I just got literally a cat litter scoop I pulled the tray out and I shook out what was there and then I slid the, the drawer back in then there was a door over on the opposite side that just folded down for me to get eggs so I mean for its intent and purpose and for the price and for the convenience right because that's what you're paying for you're paying for the convenience of everything's already been measured out and there's already slots and <laughs> there's my daughter with her little bug house so again, as I sign off here, finally, on the longest video in the history of Real Simple Mama, um, let me know what you think about in the comments, what materials you use, what stuff you liked. Um, certainly, you want to have a roof that's not going to leak, that's going to be angled. You want to seal all of your wood. Yes, ma'am. You got roly polies? Wow. I see. Okay. But give us your suggestions or your questions in the comments. Tell us what category you're talking about. And, man, I hope this helps somebody because this, this has been a project for me to do this video. And now I can go throw my notes away, and I'm going to edit this and get it online. Thanks for watching, guys.